It was like a full 10 years before civil rights that the Cold War opened the doors for me. Space was not a tangible thing to be spending money on to, to the majority of people in the country. But Sputnik made an impact on that. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. 500 miles up, the artificial moon is boosted to a speed counterbalancing the pull of gravity and released. I guess Americans have always had the pride that we're the best. And when you look up and you find out the opposition is ahead of you, it's a wake-up call. So now, once you're in competition, then you want to win. So Sputnik said, hey, you, you guys are running in second place. A two-man race in your second place, so that's like being last. <laughs> We migrated from Dallas, Texas to California when I was seven years old. I was very enthused about moving. I didn't know things were gonna be better. I just knew it would be different. In spite of my background up to that time, when I got on the Greyhound bus, I sat in the seat right behind the bus driver and my mom immediately took me to the back of the bus. And so that began my journey of life from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. We moved to Santa Monica during the time of uh, internment where the Japanese were being taken out of the communities and put into internment camps around the country. I really didn't understand it at that time, like eight years old, how the war was with Japanese and Germans, but the Japanese were in turn, the Germans who lived here were not. That caused me to develop the, the sensitivity to how people were treated. I was a hurdler in high school, and so I had an understanding of barriers, be they physical barriers in the hurdles that I ran or in life. The realism of socioeconomics was keep your nose clean so you can go work at whatever you would be allowed to do. And that generally was not professional stuff. It was manual labor, the skills, the up from slavery phenomenon was there. It wasn't until I was uh, I took this aptitude test and as a senior that my grades came back very well and I was very strong in math and science. My high school principal at that time, when he discovered that I had decided to pursue engineering, he told me that there were no black engineers and recommended that I pursue a job kind of a thing rather than a career path. It was. Uh, the impossible dream. It was illogical at that time to assume that it could happen. So just a hand of fate, divine intervention that said, Shelby, go for it. I worked at night for Rockwell in Palmdale as a janitor while going to school. The only thing I was aware of living in Val Verde, which was just a few miles from Santa Susana where they tested the rocket engines, I heard some of the tests roaring, had no idea what it was. After a couple of years, I decided to go apply. I guess my initial feelings were that I was kind of in awe of the opportunity. When I got to Rocketdyne, there weren't many blacks there. I learned to deal with the close to zero phenomenon comfortably. The fact that it was not totally compatible and everybody wasn't in love. And I guess I felt like as long as I learned to swim, I, I was okay in the water. The assignment was to provide a camera system that would verify the separation of the stages. I guess historically, when you have vehicles that separate, there's always been a concern about the separation because you're talking about a 33-foot diameter with a series of explosive bolts all around which have to ignite. If two or three of them get hung up, it could cause it to come off like this rather than like this. The guys in the analytical departments had been doing analysis for literally, I guess, years 
to prove that we understand the separation and it's okay. And NASA kind of said, show me. I'd say the camera was probably about 12 inches or so in diameter, a couple of feet long, and we have developed uh, special structural attachments to install it in the vehicle, to make sure it didn't interfere with other hardware. Ultimately, they had to take my word for the fact that it would work. Two, one, zero. We have commenced. We have liftoff. Liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Five seconds into the flight, we're looking good. 72 degrees, all five F1 engines firing. Uh, looking good. They're giving a green light at this time from range safety. We didn't actually know the result for some time. It had to be recovered out of the ocean, developed, and processed. I happened to have a young man come and visit me here. He was in the Navy, so he asked me, well, what did you do on the Apollo? Well, I named a few things, and that was one of them. Oh my goodness, it was a surprise. His element was to recover the cameras. So we became very, uh, very close as a result of finding out after all these years, after 30 years, that we were involved in that project on that day and didn't know it. I wouldn't be surprised by the time we found it, dried it out and developed the film, whatever, it might have been a month or two before they knew the results. Never doubted it. Never had any doubt. I know I was a, I guess I considered myself an, an eternal optimist. I thought that while we might have had a setback here and there, which we didn't, I didn't see nor did I have fear of failure. The image is so fantastic. That's why it's used everywhere. I mean, the purpose for it was satisfied as soon as we saw it go away, but you see the curvature of the earth and all this stuff. They had not seen that before. So, Looking back at that, it becomes understandable why this little project had a life of its own. I worked another 30 years. Not once did I ever use the camera system as a reference of anything I did in my entire career. Not once did I use it. I just didn't give it that degree of importance. It was just something you do. You did what you had to do.